I've been looking for new tool to replace Evernote uh, ever since Evernote lost my login and um, I fired them. And I fell into Obsidian. Um, Obsidian is a tool that allows us to keep notes on your local computer. And it's uh, all markdown files. So it's just straight text files, uh, which is great. It also supports, you know, displaying PDFs and stuff like that. Um, and it's it's an amazing tool. It's got uh, uh, plugins. It's got Canvas. So you could do, you know, laying out ideas and stuff like that. But the plugins are amazing. Um, and when I fell into Obsidian, I was looking for that web clip that Evernote provided. And we can do that with Obsidian Live Sync Clip, which is a plugin. Um, it's a little bit of setup to set this up, but it allows me to like clip this page and it, it goes and it grabs this page so I can remember it later. And that's that's what I was looking for. That was amazing. And I wanted this to work on multiple devices and, and I was able to do that. Um, this is a Obsidian Canvas. And it is just a couple cards that exist. So, you know, a couple pieces of content that exist. And then also just some cards um, or yeah, cards here and some canvas, but uh, yeah. Um, so I've got this running across three computers. So my primary laptop, the one I'm using right now, uh, my phone, right? I use my phone as more of my primary computer than my primary computer. So being able to grab stuff on the phone and then also a secondary uh, computer that I have in, in the house and the and then the web clip piece. Right. And the magic of this is web clip needs a tool called Obsidian Live Sync. Um, and then the Live Sync actually syncs all three of these tools together, all three of the devices together. Obsidian has its own uh, baked in um, syncing capability um, that you can use. Uh, for for a small fee, or, which you know supports the Obsidian tool, um, but you don't need to get it that way. I have uh, a Proxmox computer here that I can use, um, so I set up the Couch DB that Obsidian Live Sync needs. And now, when I'm visiting a web page, I could do Web Clip. Web Clip, you know, ties into the Obsidian Live Sync capability to um, work off the Couch DB on, on my server, and then the notes show up in my um, uh, computers here, computers and phones, right? And this is amazing, and I love it. And I also have a rocket book, and I'm not much of a paper notes person. I love the idea of it. I just don't use it all that much. But I was looking, and rocket book has a sync capability to uh, Nextcloud. And Nextcloud is something you can self-host. So I installed Nextcloud on my Proxmox server. And then I have Nextcloud synced to only one computer, only one computer, um, because I have Live Sync running and Live Sync syncs all these three together. And if you have two syncing tools, um, they can they can collide and they can fight and they just, it's, it's horrible. You never want to do that. Um, but I'm getting pretty good results having Nextcloud talk to only one computer. Uh, it provides a backup of um, the notes that are on my primary la uh, laptop that will get synced into this, and then the, the Proxmox server is, is backed up. Um, I also have this computer backed up on a, on a different technology, a different way, so all my notes are backed up remotely, you know, two different ways, two different paths. Um, so my notes are fairly secure that way, um, something that was important to me. And so I can... Check my rocket book. I can, you know, rocket book. There's some icons at the bottom of the screen, and and you can direct those to different places. So I can actually check a checkbox. And I can actually direct my rocket book notes into Nextcloud into specific folders on the computer, and then on my primary computer, and that's into the Obsidian Vault, and then Obsidian Live Sync will then share those paper notes across all the other devices. And this is amazing and i love it and then i just started playing with ai because i wanted the normal text fields uh text files which obsidian supports with with markdown um so it's just plain text 
because I want to be able to take my notes and, and feed it into a, a generative AI. I just I knew that was something that I wanted to work on, and and I found uh, a way to do that, and that's with a tool called Olama. Olama is a generative AI that runs locally on your computer. So you download uh, Olama and it runs on your computer. And then um, you can add plugins to Obsidian to talk to Olama. And now um, my primary laptop, which is running Olama, um, is communicating to uh, Obsidian so I can, I can communicate i can ask questions of my notes and it's it's amazing and i love it um but there's some plugins that you need to set all this up so if i go into community plugins we can see my uh, plugins um ai llm i tried that i'm, I'm not using it at the moment we can see that's a olama plugin i like the idea of this one but it's not the one I'm, i found that I've, I've liked um broken links um just to check on broken links uh, because I've imported a lot of stuff. I've got a lot of linking. I'm just figuring stuff out and this helps me kind of connect to my stuff. Um, convert URL to preview. So what this does for me is a lot of times I'm looking at YouTube videos on my phone and I can take that YouTube video and I share that YouTube video to Obsidian as a daily note. And uh, that daily note gets synced and it's across all the uh, computers. And then I'll come back a couple days later and I'll curate the daily notes. And I like previewing the daily notes right in um, um, Obsidian. So I can go into uh, daily notes, um, which are here, and I can grab a uh, preview and we'll give it a second here and this is that preview and what it'll do is it'll pop up a youtube video preview uh, of course it's being slow right now right um but it'll pop up a, a preview here uh and, and when it's working right so if you take a video and then it's running slow and it's not going to preview um oh but you because up oh, there there it's showing up so here's coming in the preview um and so I, I could pull in um, the preview here. So I got that video player and a link to the video. And then I'm also pulling in the transcripts, which is another plugin. Um, but that's, yeah, so that's the, the preview allows me to, to pull that in. Yeah, they're, they're the preview just showed up, right? So it'll show that preview up. Um, it's running slow because I've got a lot of things running on the computer. Um, Copilot, this is the tool that I found that I like to use Olama and um, Obsidian. And this is, shows up as a uh, one of these icons, which I'm going to say, yeah, Copilot. So I click on Copilot and it'll open up a chat. And now I can select Olama as my chat engine um, and can configure which model that you like. And you got a couple options here. You can just do generic chat. You can do long note Q and A. And what that does is that grabs the content of this tool, right? Grabs the content of the chat. Bring this and it'll pop in. It'll, it'll, basically, I can ask questions of this document. Now I've pulled in the transcript of this YouTube video. And so I can basically do a search of a chat against the YouTube content. And then it also chat its entire, um, uh, come on, let me pick it, the entire vault. And uh, when I do that, it's going to re-index any vaults or anything. <laughs> that meant my computer just started grinding um, the, the GPU because it's feeding this into the um, Olama, uh, which, you know, is... is intensive and it's running on my computer pretty pretty hard right now um but yeah so i can chat um a specific document i can chat all of my notes right which is amazing so you can see i've got notes from you know a long long time and um 
yeah, so that's amazing um, to be able to pull that together. And then some of the other plugins I'm using, uh, Crossbow, uh, again, I don't know that I love it. I'm just trying to find backlinks to my notes as I'm, you know, connecting dots. Excaladraw, I like the idea of Excaladraw. Um, I don't haven't used it yet. I'm using this because I've got pen support on all my devices, including my, my phone. And uh, Excaladraw supports that pen input, which I love the idea. File cleaner, um, this allows me to just click delete files and, and it will clean up a bunch of files that have gone away. So, you, you know, I've got some bad links for one of the documents I've, I've grabbed. So I can, you know, clean up those documents pretty easily with file cleaner, which is nice. Um, iconize, that allows me to put the pretty icons on the, the sides, right? Importer, this is what I use to bring my Evernote content into Obsidian. Uh, that was kind of a, a one-time thing. Um, done now, so, you know, I've got that turned off. Olama is another AI plugin. Um, don't know that I'm, I'm using that one yet. I, I've co-piloted someone I'm liking so much uh, thus far. OmniSearch is a pretty cool tool that allows you to search even inside of PDF documents um, through this text extractor plugin. Um, so while I've got a lot of PDFs uh, on uh, in Obsidian um, and this normal search up here doesn't search inside the PDFs, this OmniSearch does search inside the PDF by running a text extractor. Um, and then pulls the, the text out and makes it available. And then uh, Live Sync has an option to sync hidden files, um, which means this primary computer is doing the uh, text um, processing within the PDFs, and then it shares it out to these other, you know, my phone, um, and then also this other computer, which isn't near as powerful as, as the, you know, the main, main laptop. Um, what else do I have? Uh, paste image rename. So when I run the uh, web clip, it you know creates an attachments folder, and there's a whole bunch of attachments, but they get like really dumb names. And this uh, rename allows me to change these file names, these image names, to match the uh, name of the actual clipped document. Uh, which is helpful because it makes the, the gibberish go away. So I do like um, the the paste image rename. And then when you copy paste, um, it renames them as you paste and which is you know its primary uh, name. Um, but I also like it for that import um, or say the um, web clip uh, rework. It's just part of my curation process, you know, to learn you. You look at something and you come back a few days later or whatever and you look at it again. So part of that curation process, I just clean everything up. Um, Self-hosted live sync. This is the magic um, that kind of glues all of this together. Text extractor, again, that's part of OmniSearch. Um, text generator is another AI tool that I really like the idea of. I'm just, I'm struggling making it useful. Um, as, at, at speeds that my computer can run Olama. Um, if I had uh, more capable AI, uh, you know, video card and stuff like this, I think Text Generator could be really powerful because you could do things like autocomplete and it can generate autocomplete um, all based on you know, local, doc, local information. Um, Waypoint is a way to kind of create a, a uh, Map of content style document. So if I close the attachments, I go into web clip and this kind of gives me that table of contents um, of what's going on. I don't know that I love it yet, um, but uh, trying to find easy buttons to kind of glue all my content together. And then why transcript, YouTube transcript. That's the tool that I was I used to grab the YouTube videos um, grab the transcript and copy those transcripts into um, Obsidian. Uh, and yeah, this is my current workflow. So like I said, uh, I go into, you know, this canvas. A lot of times I start on my phone. I will share uh, 
you know, YouTube video or a page um, to Obsidian into the daily notes um, that gets synced out. And then on the weekends, uh, I will, uh, usually with the primary laptop, sometimes on the secondary laptop, I will just go in and, you know, relook at the daily notes, clean up the names, um, add uh, context because the daily notes when they come in are just dates. Um, but I can add more context, you know, the names or whatever. So it's, it's more meaningful when I want to go back and look at stuff. So you can see early on, you know, Evernote, Obsidian, you know, the, the various things that I'm interested in and, and, and researching um, kind of show up. And then um, a lot of times I'll move notes, daily notes into other, other sections. So here you can see this was a daily note, I know, because it's got the date. So this is looking at a you know open source library that um, for for machine learning and stuff like that um, that I've moved into my AI folder and uh, you know in the AI folder that waypoint you can see I've got different sections um, you know click into Obsidian and that's another um, a waypoint document that puts stuff in yeah and I just end up playing with uh playing with the documents and working on I'm I'm finding that that's really helpful for me to just use this tool. I'm I'm using it almost every day, especially because I can use it with the phone. Um Rocket Book, I, I don't even use that weekly, but when I do use it, it is it's amazing. My handwritten notes just kind of show up and it works. And then I'm playing with uh, uh local large language models, which allow me to chat with my, my local documents, my local knowledge. And it's amazing. And I love it. And Obsidian is awesome, especially when you have a, a, a server that you can um, self-host some basically magic <laughs> to glue all these bits and pieces together. So hopefully that was a, a good overview of what can be done in Obsidian and self-hosting a uh, uh, pretty powerful capability. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask them in the 